the Bangladesh distribution of green project was approved in June last year. You know. Since its approval, the project implementation goes very smoothly. You know, by doing this project, we are going to provide 2.5 million service connections to the rural families. As we all understand, without electricity, people you know, have a very difficult time you know, and cannot really improve their living standards. If every household can have five family members, that means 2.5 million you know, service connections can bring direct benefits to more than 5.5 million people living in the rural areas in Bangladesh. That's going to create a very big social impact in the Bangladesh economic development. When we do projects, actually we conduct a lot of public consultation. We meet you know, the rural people living in those poor villages and also uh, the people who may be affected by the project, during, particularly during construction. And the, People's generally general understanding is they are going to be, you know, to get some benefits from the project. That's why they are very supportive. I give you one example. When we conduct our project at a visit in the north part of Dhaka, in a rural village, a very old lady came out and, and told us that without, without electricity, he dare not go outside you know, during evening because she worried about whether or not she is going to fall down and bring a lot of troubles and financial difficulties to his children. Another example is you know, when we visit one primary school nearby and uh, the only thing the primary school had is uh, one square meter you know, size solar panel. Actually, for the kids, it's very difficult for them to read books and, and doing some study and finish you know, their homework during the evening. Also, a lot of children told us that you know, without electricity, they cannot you know, really you know, make any you know, significant improvement you know, in their education. So I think put all these things together, we really do believe you know, by doing this project, we can do bring a lot of you know, social benefits to Bangladesh to the country and also to its people. Obviously the, the, sco the scope and scale of the One Belt One Road is huge. You're talking here about almost 65 countries along the uh, Belt and uh, Road. Uh, $1.6 trillion is a massive uh, amount of uh, infrastructure finance uh, that's required. The Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, which has $100 billion of capitalization, and the Silk Road Fund with $40 billion, these institutions should all be seen as a uh, comprehensive set of uh, institutions contributing to infrastructure development. They're not each individual um, initiatives that are not connected to um, each other. All of these institutions play a role in, in um, dealing with the funding gap in, in infrastructure. I think the internationalization of the room is a good thing for China and it's a good thing for the world. So also for the countries along one belt, one road. Because China becomes a more, ever more important part of the international world, of the international trade, and hence its currency should become part of uh, that trade as well. And I think again that will be very helpful to uh, develop Chinese domestic capital markets and their link to the international capital markets. But I think it's an initiative like the One Belt, One Road. It's a, it's a different driver, but again, it's exactly the same purpose to uh, develop infrastructure, to allow organize financing of that infrastructure in order to allow the economies where it is positioned to develop. The One Belt, One Road initiative is definitely a good way for that influence can be brought to bear. Um, not just though for China's influence, but it of course will assist in the development of a number of economies who will be uh, around the region. And that funding for infrastructure will be uh, beneficial in terms of the role that China plays, but also beneficial to the countries who will benefit directly from the infrastructure. The other benefit, not just within the region, but again right around the world, um, of the opening up of the RMB, internalization, internationalization of the RMB, uh, is that, that, that it's useful for the world to have another strong reserve currency. And we're seeing that more and more 
uh, countries now want to be able to clear in RMB um, and there's a growing demand for transactions to be conducted in RMB. So yes, I think the internationalization of the currency is positive, not just for China, but also for the rest of the world. Well, the, the positive meaning is um, that, that many countries who would not have been able to invest that amount of money in infrastructure by themselves have now had access to a, to a fund.